When Rocky and I started at Iraq Space four and a half years ago, the cloud was just barely a baby. And certainly Iraq Space's efforts in the cloud were, uh, were uh, nascent. And now the, the world has really started taking sh shape around cloud and the OpenStack has become dramatically more important. And we have one of the world's experts on software de defined storage here to talk with us about where the world is going with hybrid cloud, open cloud, and uh, what's going on. So we're going to hear about uh, Swift Stack and uh, the software defined storage right now. And who are you? Hi, Robert. Hey, I'm Joe Arnold, and I'm the CEO of SwiftStack. And my background has been in building web infrastructure. And so I was one of the folks building out infrastructure on Amazon Web Services, sorry, platform services on, on top of the cloud environment. And so I've just had the opportunity as a programmer, as a team builder, as an open source uh, a developer to help build out cloud infrastructure. Yeah, well, I, and I need a, uh, I need to have a college level course in the next 20 minutes on what's happening with the cloud because a lot's been happening. I mean, we, we say we're the open cloud company and we talk about hybrid clouds. Yep. A lot has changed in cloud since I joined Rackspace and I, I'm falling behind. <laughs> I mean, t well, tell me, first of all, you're really an important player. Your company is in the OpenStack world and you don't work for Rackspace. You, you, OpenStack is an open source foundation, right? Yeah, and what we do is we take OpenStack Swift, which is a it's, a, it's a cloud storage platform, and it was originally developed by at Rackspace, actually, and was one of the original projects as part of the OpenStack project. And it was open sourced, and gosh, I had the opportunity to work with it in the early days and do some early initial deployments of it, and realized, hey, there's an opportunity here to build out private cloud storage systems uh, that make it easy to get up and running. Because you know, well, storage is so important when you're building applications, right? You're, you have the Google <laughs> Glass on, right? Yeah. And, but there's, there's no C drive on that thing. Well, like, there's uh, 16 gigs of okay, there, there. Yeah. It's in there somehow, but yeah. when, you click, when you click a photo, it's, it's going somewhere. And of course, that's you know, Google's cloud in this case. But all sorts of other people are building out other applications, and that data needs to go somewhere. Yeah. And it's not going to our devices. It's not being stored on our laptops as much anymore, right? It's going into these data centers. And, and so the problem that Swift solves is that it's a great place for these people who are building these applications to store that data. Yeah. And with Swift, what you can do is you can go to places like Rackspace and you can consume it in its public form, right? Um, or you can come to companies like such as our Swift Stack. Um, and there's, or you can roll it yourself because it's an open source project and get your own storage cloud up and running in your own data center. In your own data center? In your own data center. So you're not paying Rackspace, you're not paying, you're well, not you can No, well we actually have customers who do the managed service side of okay. things yeah. and, and so that, that allows them to own the infrastructure that they need and have other people come manage the physical infrastructure. But shape it the way they need. You know, uh, people who've been in cloud for a while, like you at Dart, understand what, what we mean by cloud. Uh, but newbies are like, uh, well, is it really cloud if it's running in our own data center or on, on your laptop? Or you, yeah. you told me you got OpenStack running on a Raspberry Pi. Yeah, no, we, <laughs> yeah, it's open source software. So you, you kinda, it kind of starts sprouting up in all sorts of places that you never, you never expect it, yeah. it to be. And I, look, you have, you know, when it comes to storing, storing data and storing data in the cloud, you have to put a lot of trust in where you're putting that data. And I think for the developer audience that, that's out there, if, if you're putting data in, in a form that is fundamentally on an open platform, right, with something that's backed by OpenStack, uh, OpenStack Swift for that data storage, knowing that you can move your application around or if, if, if push comes to shove and you need, for whatever reason, build out your own storage cloud, then you know you have a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a path to do that. 
Um, and so that's, that's pretty, I think it's pretty cool uh, for, for storage. So when, when would people go to a Rackspace or a competitor of Rackspace yep. for storage? or come to SwiftStack? Where is that demarcation line? When do you know yeah. you need SwiftStack versus Rackspace? Well, it's not really, you know, if, because you, you can still scale up in, in, in both environments. Yeah. But, you know, what we found is that uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's kind of an inflection point that, that people reach when they need to, either need to move to some more managed or they need to have something that's on premise. And so it's, it's a factor sometimes of scale. So there's, three, there's lots of terms we're throwing around, right? Public Sorry. cloud is you're sharing resources, resources with other people. So right. there might be a, a bank of computers at Rackspace somewhere or right. Amazon, and you're sharing those with other people. Yes. Managed means you own it. You, you, somebody else is managing the servers, right. but the servers are all yours. Right. You're not sharing them with anybody else. Correct. And then there's private. 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 Private's in your own data center. In your own data center. Okay. And the reason why people want to set up their own private data centers is largely based on the control that they want to have over that data. Yeah. So if you're a pharma yeah. or a government, government or, or even who just doesn't want anybody to look in, in there without them knowing yeah. or they don't want to share the resources. They yeah. want to make sure that they have the latest SSDs and the latest machines and really fast performance, right? It's, it's when people want to have that control. Or and low cost. Or if low cost. you go the cost. other way and buy just a bunch of Seagate drives and go low cost, you may, maybe don't need to have the fastest SSDs. And Correct. now you can save a lot of money. So now you, think, now you start thinking about those applications that, that people are building. It's not about having the fast SSDs necessarily. It's about supporting millions and millions and millions of users. And so that's where oftentimes people do go for the lower cost maybe lower cost on the per, on the component level, but high performance in terms of, hey, we can throw millions of users at the storage system because we have a, a popular application. And so we're seeing we're seeing people interested in the private space where it is the, the, the control, the pharma, the regulatory, the people who just don't want to have their data assets outside of their own four walls. Yeah. And then there's the people who have large scale and so we're seeing folks in, in, in both categories who come to us. Yeah. Now, when does, a, 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 let's say a large enterprise, when will they call you versus call Rackspace or call somebody else? So, so with Rackspace, there's managed private cloud options from what I understand. And what we provide is software only. Yeah. And so we provide um, two things. We provide the, this installer, the runtime environment for, to get the storage system up and, up and running and provide a management service. And in fact, we're a customer of Rackspace because part of our management plane that we provide runs in the Rackspace. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but there's those who want everything on premise, so we have that mix as well, so it can be fully private. And so those are two different types of customers. Some people want things fully managed or yep. managed in their own environment, or other people want to manage things themselves. And so they're going to be choosing different products based on, on what their needs are. Great. So, um, so y you have some or something to show me here. W what are we going to see? Uh, so we just have a, a, a quick glimpse into the product that we've built around uh, OpenStack Swift, right? And, okay. and the pain that we're seeing here is, is a controller for, uh, for Swift Stack. Right? Yeah. And, and this is visibility. In, in fact, here's a capacity management. So what's in green is storage used. And hey, don't cross the red line because you're going to run out of storage. These are things that once you're managing your own infrastructure, now they're your responsibility. Yeah. Hey, how do you do that? Now this is the tool that allows those, uh, those deployments to do that. Yep. Um, the installation is pretty easy. Um, I, I'm just going to pipe this command to bash, and I'm going to install everything that you need to get the storage system up and running. And then what this, how this works is you can take storage nodes, commodity systems, Seagate drives, Intel um, components in them, really not specialized equipment at all. And you can run simple commands and get them installed into your environment. And yep. you can put them in multiple data centers, and they'll get string, strung together into and, uh, into a cluster that spans wide geographies, for example, and 
I, I and this, this gets to where you wrote the book on software defined storage. We right? did yes. So there's a book on uh, on software defined storage with OpenStack Swift, and we actually go really detail into how Swift works, when you use it, how to install it, how to operate it, how to manage it, and you could yeah you could become an expert too and get ramped up on the book. Um, you can use Swift Stack as well, um, but even if you don't use something like Swift Stack, we go through all the, the install options. And what's happening behind the screen here is all the automation. And, uh, and then the book describes, here's how to do it. Here's how to roll, it, roll up your sleeves and, and, and do it by hand yourself. Wow. Um, what does it take for a company to move from old style data centers that aren't cloud enabled to new style data centers to, that are and do you help with that? I mean, well, I, it's what's, just, what's your, I guess where I'm going yeah, with, is what's your business model? So the business, the business <laughs> is open source, right? It's, it's free open software. source, yeah. And and so we have it's open source software. We have many folks who are on the the OpenStack Swift core team, as it's called, within yeah. OpenStack and the project technically. So we're contributing an awful lot into open source. But the way we think about it is 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 that that core that open source bit is the engine. And on that engine, you can do you can build all sorts of things around that. And what we've done is we've pieced together everything that is needed to get that system up and running. And all the there's just kind of some stuff that's a pain in the butt to do in terms of integration, like authentication and security things, uh, tuning, all the performance enhancements, all the operational bits. They're just there's a lot of legwork there. Yep. And so what we've done is we've just used our experience to make sure we've built a really great version, a private installation of that, and combined it with the control that you get from the management tools, and then we sell a subscription license to that. And the business model is there's, there's a sub subscription license to that whole suite of services, and we actually run a ma the management console, like I mentioned uh, yeah. before, in, in the cloud, so people can just use that, um, or we sell an enterprise license to to use that that whole suite of tools. How does how does what you're doing compare? Because I, I keep hearing that oh you can run Microsoft uh, Azure on its own data center, or uh, there's some companies who are saying oh we can run a, a copy of the Amazon's data center on on your own data center or cloud on your own data center. How does OpenStack stand up in that competitive landscape? And, and how do you guys stand so up? So open, open, oh gosh, it's such a, it's a huge difference because it, one, you have so many more companies participating. I mean, look at the landscape that OpenStack has. You have big names, lots of startups, lots of deployments out there. There's, you're not beholden to one company to get that infrastructure up and running. You know, whereas before you had one or two, com one or you know, handful of companies that were controlling your destiny. I mean, it, it's 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 a world of difference in terms of the the, the operate the, the flexibility, the lack of lock-in to get and own your destiny from a data center perspective. So, you know, from a competitive competitive. This uh, is interesting like, to hear you talk this way since you started your career on Amazon's data centers. Yeah, no, I mean, well, shoot. You know what happened is we 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 brought customers onto that environment. They got too big, and then they left because we were bringing them on and they left us, right? And that it's because the, the cost curve and the one size fits all approach that they have doesn't lend itself when people really need to grow up their business. And it doesn't, it's not, it's not an, an, a thing that happens right out of the gate. It's something that happens one year, two years into the lifespan of a, of a, of a startup. And I'm not talking about big companies either, 18 person startups, they get to the point where they're spending over 100K a month in, for data intensive applications. Like if you're building a data warehousing or data processing based company, those bills add up super quick. So if you get caught in that environment, suddenly you have this giant hurdle to leap over in order to get out of that environment. So if you're gonna start in the cloud, start with something that is open, it's designed to be open from the beginning. So whatever transition you need to make, it's, it's, an, it's an easier transition. 
I mean, that would just be my word of, word of caution. And, that's and just what we uh, what preach we at say. Rackspace. Yeah. So I, I, I like what, the, what you're saying, but it's, it's surprising just, that you're a guy who built his career on Amazon. Well, no, this. but I mean, I, I mean, it was from there to, you know, when OpenStack announcement and it was, that's, this is the future. This is how, how data center infrastructure needs to be built going forward. Um, it, and, and, and it's just increasingly because of the popularity of the applications that are coming out and, 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 and data centers are getting bigger. Yeah. Data footprints are coming bigger. Compute clouds are getting bigger because those applications are going um, from the enterprise context to a cloud-based context. So, I mean, we kind of think, uh, like, when we, when we think about these apps, we, we kind of instantly, oh, uh, consumer apps, yeah. you know, photo sharing, uh, uh, that sort of thing. But n no, well, actually what's happening is you're starting to see more and more enterprises setting them, themselves up, and they have zero server closets. Yeah. They're using Box, yep. right? They're using uh, applications for... They're using Salesforce and other e online ERP and expense reporting and Workday, and suddenly they don't have any enterprise storage footprint anymore. All those applications are being sent to the cloud. And so as a result, you have this whole generation of enterprise applications that are emerging that need to be in a data center somewhere. And now they're making choices. Okay, are, are we going to run our own infrastructure? Are we going to go to the cloud? Are we going to run a combination of those two things? Yeah. And uh, what we, the pattern that we see emerging often is that people will have uh, feet in both worlds. Yeah. Where the databases, the storage systems, those are really tuned up uh, to, to house the application needs. Yeah. Because data is so hard to move around. Yeah. You can't burst out compute. But, and so they use the, the compute clouds for... Hey, we got a ton of users. We're on Oprah today, or well, sorry, Oprah's not at broadcast anymore. Well, she is. Actually. Is she? Okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, and she has her own channel. She has her own channel. Okay. <laughs> so 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 that so you burst out for the for the like the, some of the workloads that you need, yeah. but then from a data storage perspective, you just can't sh move that stuff around. So they like to keep that in house. So that's how we're seeing the hybridization happen. Now, Swift is only what one fifth of what OpenStack is, right? OpenStack is other things other than storage, right? Hey, Swift is everything <laughs> in OpenStack to me. No, uh, but yeah. So OpenStack is a project, uh, or sorry, Swift is a project within OpenStack. Right. Yeah. And so, are you? Do you think your company is just going to focus on that forever, or do you think you're going to chew in on the other? Pieces oh, of yeah, that great question. OpenStack. And business? what's what's interesting is is our customers, some are using OpenStack, some are not using, some are using bare metal. They're just trying to solve a data problem. And it's a really great tool for them to solve that data problem. And, uh, you know, OpenStack is a, an ecosystem that we're a part of. We're very compatible with that ecosystem, but it's by no means the, everything that we see. And so we see a very mixed environment, actually, in our, for our customers' deployment. So some are using got VMware and Citrix and Bare Metal and OpenStack, I mean, and, and even CAs, and, yeah, and Amazon, <laughs> and CA, and like CA, I mean, it just, it's yeah. all across the board. And what they we're solving for them is, here's a, here's a, here's a storage product for them to use. So, um, so kind of, I mean, the range, range of folks that we have, have, we're working with are service, other service providers who are trying to build their own storage services, yeah. people doing, uh, like a media archiving where, hey, that stuff can't go on tape anymore. I gotta send it out, I gotta transcode it, I gotta put ads yeah. around it. So object storage is awesome for that. Um, and then people building yeah, out the Red applications. Bull, Red Bull, for instance, has yeah. the whole media, it's, it's, it has 500 people doing what me and Rocky do, right? Yeah. And that media has to be stored somewhere. Exactly, exactly, so um, broadcasting is huge. Tell me about you, the company. Uh, yeah, yeah. We, we've been talking about OpenStack and the technology, but what's the company that you're building? How many people are? Yeah, so the company we're, we're 18 people right now. Yeah. We have uh, uh, I don't know. It was it's such a it was such a cool core group that we originally pulled pulled together. So some of the original folks building uh, OpenStack Swift are on the team. Uh, folks I've spent a long time building out infrastructure management tools with, uh, and and so we got we got our start about two years ago, and we've just been building the product, 
adding on customers. Yeah. Um, How were you we've funded? We've been funded, so we, we've been uh, funded by Mayfield uh, and Storm Ventures. Mm -hmm. And so some awesome names uh, in, in venture capital. And, you know, but kind of having the customers to buoy, buoy us along has been fantastic. So from a, from a, from a, from a business perspective, it's been, it's been really great to be, be a part of. So I'm writing a book called Age of Context, which is yeah. about sensors and wearable computers and what that all means. We just saw a mobile app just yeah. before you that's taking full advantage of this new, new age. What do you see happening in the next 18 months with not just your business, but the, maybe the industry overall and what are the trends Gosh, that people yeah. should pay attention to? Yeah, I think, so from our, the lens that we watch is, is it's, it really is about data consumption. Here. We're down here at the infrastructure la layer, right? All sorts of things are happening above us and we're just, we're there to support that. And increasingly we're just seeing more people, consumers are wanting to store more and more data and data affiliated with applications. So in terms of capturing metrics, capturing bits of data that are being streamed off of, um, we call it log data, which is kind of a, we, <laughs> It's not an accurate term, but it's a transactional history of what this device has been doing for a period of time, yeah. um, and that gets stored in a log file. So here's what, what happens when you have millions of these devices or millions of these users out there, and they're all sending out a little bit of data every hour or so, like that. Yeah, like I just took a picture of you, right? And so that went somewhere, right? Could go to... Google, and then Ift could grab it from Google Plus and put it put over it on else. Facebook and put it over on Twitter and put it over on Dropbox and put it over on my own store. So, right? and okay, and here's your expectation. You're gonna store it in all those places. You're gonna want it to be available instantly whenever you want and never get deleted. Okay, those are some, you know, you have a combination of the metadata around that. You have the actual content storage related around that the systems that we're building today are way different than what we were building four or five years ago. Completely different. Um, and the infrastructure needs to support that are changing. And it's not be changing because people want to, it's changing because they have to. Yeah. Because the consumer expectation, uh, both in the enterprise and the consumer side, has just completely just done a flip. Yeah, we talked to Tapingo yesterday, who's letting college students wake up walk out their front door and order a coffee, and the coffee's ready when they get to their coffee shop, and then they can order a breakfast, and it's waiting as That's well, cool. you know? It's pretty crazy. We expect this new world to huh? arrive, particularly with, with when you get Google Glass, right? Correct, correct, correct. So the, the world is just completely shifted in, in terms of expectation of how we're consuming media. Just consumption patterns are radically different. You know, I mean, I finally unplugged my Comcast Right, and now I'm looking forward to pay, you know, Roku and Amazon. Or, you know, the money just kind of spreads around. But now I'm I'm going to expect that content across all of these different channels, and I'm going to get By more way, specific in my content that I'm going to. You be might go back on Comcast because Comcast is hosted on OpenStack as well. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> my new Comcast. Well, box. I have to pay Comcast for internet, yeah. so you know it all kind of comes around. Well, my new Comcast box, everything's stored on the cloud, right? So yeah. So you're talking OpenStack, uh, Swift store. And it, you know when you're watching that movie, it's coming through Swift as well. Um, we got to wrap this up. I could talk to you all day long because this the center of what we are, what our, our modern world is, right? Everything runs on top of these cloud infrastructures, and it's really interesting meeting somebody like you who knows what they're talking about and, and builds it every day. <laughs> um, where do we learn more about it? So we have a website and we have some resources there, both on our product and also on the open source technology. So if you really want to roll up your sleeves and get down and dirty into, into the nits, nuts and bolts of everything, that's great. There's resources there for you. Um, uh, it's at swiftstack.com. If you'd like to get a, if your viewers might be interested in a copy of the book, it's at swiftstack.com forward slash book, and they can request a copy there. Very good. That's what we have. Well, thank you so thanks much for the opportunity. For it's really awesome, and thanks for what you're doing for the OpenStack world. It's, we're, we're taking advantage of it, too. <laughs> thanks, Robert. <laughs>